While most predators eat their prey, these attacks were different. There was no blood coming out of them in any place. Just, it, was just, it was just bizarre. They'd wake up some one morning and find the carcass of their four favorite rabbits sucked dry of blood and just lying there on the ground. This could be a sign of a new and deadly creature, the chupacabra, said to suck the blood of farm animals. I mean, because of the big teeth on it, it looked dangerous. Front legs sort of looked like a kangaroo. It had fangs that were just unbelievably strange for a canine creature. Witnesses describe a bizarre four-legged hairless creature with back legs much longer than the front legs, making the beast appear to look like a cross between a canine and a kangaroo with razor-sharp fangs. Quero, Texas. In 2007, Phyllis Canyon noticed a fearsome beast skulking around her ranch. The first time I saw this animal, it was right here. And I was totally shocked because I had never seen anything that looked like this animal looked. I got out of the car and stood there and looked at it. And it trotted off a little further and then it just continued to go in that direction. At the same time, Phyllis noticed that something was killing her chickens and leaving the bodies. Now, most of the predators here will actually take the animal and take it away. So I was perplexed at what this animal was that would just kill it and leave the meat. There was no blood at all. The blood was sucked out of it. I contacted my brother Byron and he said, it sounds to me like you have a chupacabra. Phyllis Canyon isn't the only Texan to see a chupacabra. Major sightings have been reported in Elmendorf and Pollock, Texas, hundreds of miles away from Cuero. These are small creatures with odd-looking teeth, fangs that are coming out. They've got hairless nature. There, there's, there's this lack of uh, hair on their bodies and a bluish kind of skin tone. Joe Conger, a reporter for San Antonio TV station KENS, covered the story. They're actually taking chickens and livestock and actually sucking the blood out of them, which is what kind of got ranchers and, and folks like that thinking, what is going on in my neighborhood? You know, what are these beasts that are roaming through the woods? The most recent Chupacabra reports are from Texas. But the first attacks were recorded in Puerto Rico in the mid-1990s. Since then, there have been hundreds of incidents. The term Chupacabra was coined in Puerto Rico literally means goat sucker. According to the first reports, goats were the first animals that were killed, and those animals were drained out of blood. Wildlife expert Gustavo Rodriguez personally investigated some of the reported chupacabra attacks. The peak of a chupacabra story came back in 1995, where the local tabloid newspapers in Puerto Rico were reporting hundreds of these attacks uh, during a course of several months. People did not know what was going on, the government puts civil defense officials in charge of investigating the attacks. I worked in emergency management until 16 years, and we never saw that kind of, of, of scene in, in my life. Photos taken during the crisis clearly show farm animals with distinctive puncture wounds. Emergency management supervisor Ami Vasquez saw the dead animals up close. In the majority of the cases that we investigate of the chupacabra, the animals was uh, without blood. But the creature described to Vasquez was different than the creatures in the Texas sightings. Witnesses in Puerto Rico described the chupacabra as a two-legged hairless beast that stands on its hind legs like a kangaroo with sharp fangs and huge glowing red eyes. It resembles a gargoyle. The chupacabra del alto mío tiene los ojos ovalados, rojo, y tiene los cuatro colmillos muy largo. Eyewitness Misael Negron Melendez saw the creature firsthand. It's an experience he won't soon forget. It was a fall night in 1995. 
Negron was on his balcony when he noticed something standing by the far railing. Entonces yo me quedaba mirando todo el tiempo, mirándolo y mirándolo. Pero empecé a caminar hacia donde él. Misael got closer and realized that the creature on the edge of the balcony was unlike anything he had ever seen. Entré a la casa y cerré la puerta inmediatamente. But the creature wasn't done with him. Mira hacia la ventana y chupacabra me estaba mirando. Y nunca había estado tan asustado en mi vida. Soon, Chupacabra reports were pouring in from Chile, Nicaragua, Mexico, and the United States. The most recent sightings in the U.S. have been centered in Texas, including one in the town of Elmendorf. Okay, breeding pens. Rancher Devin McNally knows firsthand how deadly these animals can be. He says that in 2005, a chupacabra began stalking and killing his chickens. Here, I, I, I found as many as over 30 in, uh, on one of the chupacabras killed. But they were just dead. And like the Puerto Rican attacks, McNally was shocked to find the animals drained of blood. There was no blood coming out of them in any place. Just, it was just, it was just bizarre. The gruesome death of his chickens coincided with the appearance of a strange creature. I saw this creature four times. I, every time I ran inside to get the gun, time I got back, she was gone. I'm wasting my time. So I, I decided the next time I saw the animal, I would put a gun handy so that I wouldn't have to go inside and get it. A few days later, Devin got his chance. Well, I was carrying buckets of water. My mind totally was oblivious to anything else, but then I saw the animal. It was within 30 yards of me. I had the gun propped up in the tree branch in the crook. So all I had to do was take it and just find my range. And I, I knew that I would need to act that fast. Devin killed the creature with one shot. I just popped off one shot as fast as I could. When Devin approached the kill, he was amazed by what he saw. Photos taken at the time show a four-legged animal with big teeth and bizarre skin. After I shot it and I was approaching it carefully with gun ready, it got weirder and weirder. It looked as though, what's wrong with the skin? What's, what's, what's that weird color? The skin was like an elephant's, that the animal was probably not a dog, probably not a coyote. Now what? Devin still has the bones of the creature he killed. Cryptozoologist Ken Gerhard has followed the Chupacabra reports for years. He and wildlife expert Lee Hales are about to launch an expedition here in South Texas. Well, this is our target area, Lee. Their goal? To capture a live chupacabra. The evidence they uncover, plus key existing evidence like hair, teeth, and skin of these beasts, will be sent to several labs across the U.S. Experts will look for clues to just what this beast is. But Gerhard first heads to Devin McNally's ranch to get an up-close look at the bones of the creature he hopes to capture. Tea? We did He's been tea. studying the animals of Texas for years, and right away he notices a startling feature, the fangs. This is obviously uh, the canine tooth on this, uh, on this animal. However, uh, we can see that it seems a lot, lot more pronounced than typically we would see on, on, a, on an animal of this size. These large canine teeth are one indication that this could be a creature unknown to science. But further analysis is needed. We have some good molars here left on this lower jaw. In particular, the molars are, are good for DNA testing because they, have, you know, they are the first teeth that are developed. This molar will be sent to a lab at New York University for a complete DNA analysis. Ken lays out the creature's bones to get a better idea of the body shape. 
just a very loose reconstruction here just to kind of get some of the scale of the animal and see if we can see any other anomalies in some of the bones here. One anomaly is immediately apparent, the skull itself. And this is the sagittal crest. This appears to be a little bit more pronounced than what we typically see here. It's very high, it's kind of pointy. This could be an important clue to the creature's origins. Ken takes the measurements and photos of the crest for comparison to known mammals. But Ken has a preliminary assessment of the bones. Very obviously a carnivore. And more specifically, it looks very much like a canine. A canine, even a jagged toothed monster like this one, is still a four-legged creature. But the chupacabra in Puerto Rico was always described as standing on two legs. How can the descriptions of the chupacabra vary so wildly? Basically, the, the, uh, the legend of the chupacabra spread around the globe uh, in a variety of ways. One is through the media. Author Benjamin Radford studies the role of the media in sightings like these. There were news reports of these chupacabra attacks, chupacabra sightings uh, on TV and the newspaper. That's, that really disseminated it. While the creature descriptions varied, the result of the attacks were the same. The hallmark of chupacabras is not its physical description because people don't agree on what it looks like. Its hallmark is the dead animals it leaves behind. And that still leaves just who or what is responsible for the killings. But Phyllis Canyon thinks that she may have the answer to the Texas attacks. This is the beast that we think is the chupacabra. The first eyewitness accounts of the chupacabra came in Puerto Rico in the mid-1990s. Researcher Mark Davenport and filmmaker Joe Palermo were in Puerto Rico filming a documentary during the height of the attacks. Day and night, over the radio, over television, in the newspaper, whatever, they were constantly talking about this chupacabra activity going on. This was very serious to them. The animal deaths were a continuing thing. This happened almost daily. They wake up some one morning and find the carcass of their four favorite rabbits sucked dry of blood and just lying there on the ground. Palermo and Davenport turn their cameras to the Chupacabra story. Their footage is now important existing evidence of the first attacks. They conducted dozens of interviews. But this interview with a local mayor was interrupted by an urgent phone call. A chupacabra had just been spotted nearby. Davenport and Palermo rushed to the scene. The description that we've been getting of chupacabras, they tend to have claws. The location was in the hills above Canovanas, Puerto Rico. Coming to this particular neighborhood almost every night for four months. Incredible. Every night. Every day. Every night. Last night too. Last, uh, last, last night. Yeah. In Canovanas, Palermo and Davenport met villagers who thought they had found a chupacabra nest. Maybe she take us now to show us the nest? 